this is the Elegoo Saturn. This is my very first resin 3D printer. It's an absolute workhorse and by far my favorite machine I've ever worked with. Oh God. Oh God. This is the Elegoo Saturn 3. And this table is probably not strong enough. <laughs> to do what I want to do. <laughs> this is the brand new Elegoo Saturn 3 and you can see from just by looking at it, it is quite a lot larger than the previous model. Now I know there's a Saturn 2 and a Saturn 2S I think that have released since this machine came out and before this machine came out, but I don't own one of those. So I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at comparing the Saturn to the Saturn 3. Obviously initially we have a, a larger build height. That's one of the main changes from the old machine but you also go from a 4K screen to a 12K screen. So having that higher resolution with the screen size, we have a much higher pixel density compared to the previous model. So what we should see is some really, really, really high resolution prints compared to the older machine. As well as having a larger build height, we also have this new quite thick acrylic top, but it also has a cutout at the back so you can attach your own ventilation, which is quite nice. If we take a look at the vats, and the construction is quite similar, but the new vat has, it's closer to the Mars 3, that's another machine that I've worked with, it is a very similar size, but it is ever so slightly bigger. But it's, it is a much cleaner design. It has a few more beveled edges, which is quite nice. It isn't fully powder coated all the way around. It is slightly, you know, there is some machined metal on the bottom compared to the LEDU Saturn. Now this machine also comes sporting with a USB slot in the top, so which comes with a carbon filter that is actually included with the LEDU Saturn. So you do have a filter, a filter system built into the machine, which is quite a nice touch. Now in terms of build plate, the new Elegoo Saturn is rocking this pre-machined, pre-gritted, pre-sanded build plate, which is like quite, quite, quite a nice surface to it for prints to adhere to. But as you can see, it is quite a lot larger. It is much longer and ever so slightly wider. So this new machine is going to be able to print ever so slightly bigger prints, but the main, the main difference is the build height. Now it is still rocking the two screw ball joint, which I actually really like, but I know some of the other Elegoo machines that have been released recently are actually rocking the four point screw leveling system, but I really like this one, but I feel like it's a lot of it's coming down to personal preference. I think I'm gonna do something about this table because I think it's gonna go through it any second. So inside the box, you get the usual things you find in an Elegoo printer. You get a small tool kit, which includes a leveling card, USB stick, Allen keys, masks, uh, a little set of gloves, etc. The one thing that's missing is actually some clippers, like usually these are used for support removal. They usually come something like this. this I think these are from my Elegoo Saturn. They usually look like these ones, which aren't included this time, which is a bit of a shame, but it's not the, not the end of the world. You obviously have the machine that's very well packaged, but it also comes with a Voxel Dance Tango Slicer Lifetime License, which comes free with these machines. And uh, it's something I'm going to be trying out today because I'm normally a Chi2 Box user. I, I don't mess with that lychee stuff. <laughs> I've never used it. So it's going to be interesting to try out some new software along with this new machine and maybe it'll have some pre-set pre up profiles, which would be quite nice. But ironically, I'm going to be using this Conjure Rigid Resin, which was sent to me by Chi2 Box. So thank you, Chi2 Box. So the first thing to do with any 3D printer is to print the rook that comes with basically every printer these days and I'm going to be slicing it in voxel dance. So I printed them directly to the bed with this new textured build plate I had no issue whatsoever with adhesion. You can actually see the, the pattern on the bottom because I printed it with no supports directly on there. And uh, they, are, they are looking pretty fire now. I don't think this is 8K or 12K resin. I'm not really sure what resolution this resin is. It's just some resin and that prints have come out really really nicely. The text is looking absolutely perfect and as always the center has come out really nice but just in general i can't really see any sort of layer lines like this is the first time i've worked with a 12k printer like, obviously i've been working with 4ks for a while and i thought 4ks are pretty good but i can't see it looks perfectly clear it looks like it's been almost cast which i'm very very impressed with so obviously i'm going to go off and print something massive now without doing any other tests <laughs> So printing the Majora's Mask, I, I supported it in Voxel Dance and I just kind of YOLO'd it. I just made it bigger and I just support auto supported it and then I just sent it through. And obviously that failed. That was very silly of me and uh, just a waste of resin. So the best thing to do, especially when using a new printer, I'm using brand new software at the same time, is not go from a rook to something crazy. It's to print some exposure tests, which I've printed here. And 
they a lot of them came out quite nicely there's some that are cl quite clearly under supported because the the sub are not underexposed because the supports are broken on the print the the great thing about these tests is that they have lots of different types of anatomy on them that is supposed to print properly so by printing one of these you can kind of see what settings you should be looking at to tune the resin uh obviously mine's come out pretty well by the 0.15 like layer test i can't remember what they call it but like the the 1.5 is like it's kind of like come undone i printed a few of these but all of the the holes have pretty much come out except to when you get to 0.15 a little bit of tweaking when you do print one of these i would suggest printing multiple around the bed and as you can see like this one it's a perfectly supported and come out really nicely but a couple of them did fall off so that just showed me that it was kind of underexposing in some point so once I'd tested a few times and printed a few more to make sure all my settings were, were working properly, it was time to get deep into the trenches. Quite literally. The models we're printing here today are by Fickle Dice Games and part of their Kickstarter series of Gloom Trench 1926. Fickle Dice are a Sheffield-based game designer. Why Rose? Why Rose? And Gloom Trench 1926 is a game based on a dystopian world war where experimental weapons have gone a little bit out of hand. After two very successful Kickstarter campaigns already, they are launching their third one on August 15th, and it's based on the trench system. The miniatures are designed for any 28mm war game, whether that's because you want some more terrain, you want some cool debris on the battlefield, or you want to build your next diorama with this as the backdrop. They're both ready to print in FDM or they come fully supported for resin printing as I've done today. As I said, they're in 28mm scale but they easily shrink down to 15mm scale and print fully supported as is included. But they can be scaled to any size because you've got a 3D printer. The main pledge is for this huge 11 piece trench system that is fully modular but there are loads of extra pledges available such as this sandbag system as well to go with it. And as I said, every single part is modular so you can print out as many or as little as you like and build them however you want on your battlefield. The campaign that is launching on Kickstarter is for STL files only, so you will need a 3D printer if you want to download the STLs. But via this Kickstarter, if you don't have a 3D printer and you really want to get involved, there is also the option to order through licensed partners via the campaign. Actually, you don't even need a 3D printer. If you just like the look of them, you want to buy some, you clicked on this video because you like the look of the things, you can download them or you can buy them in physical form. So take a look at the page I've linked down below. That'll put you on the wait list for August 15th when this campaign finally goes live. But if you want to learn more about gloom trench or you want to take a look at the miniatures from the previous campaigns i've also linked the my mini factory store where you can get all the previous stl miniatures and the free rules available for gloom trench 1926 that are just link linked down below and it's all free to download to have a look at thank you so much to fickle dice games for sponsoring this video and thank you so much to you guys for watching this advert and clicking the links down below it would be amazing if you could go down and have a look at the campaign sign up onto the form to get an email when it does finally go live and have a look at the campaign when it's all up and running sponsorships like fickle dice game help keep the channel alive and and with your help, we can make their campaign become a reality and every click of the link directly supports me as well. So thank you very much to Fickle Dice Game for sponsoring and thank you for you guys for clicking the link. Anyway, what else shall we print? <laughs> so now I know that the printer can handle quite a lot and I will say, except for that initial fail, I've not really had any other problems since. So now I know the printer's working, it's handled quite a lot of weight and I've kind of like filled up the build plate. It's kind of worth going off and trying to print something even bigger. We're actually printed off this Boba Fett by Sutunga Miniatures. Uh, this is a multi-part print that's available for free on my mini factory and it is absolutely glorious it is like a hundred mil base comes in multiple parts it's fully supported ready to go and it is honestly absolutely stunning obviously the miniature has been designed so well and it looks so nice but i just can't see anything <laughs> i keep trying to look for like voxel lines or just just general layer lines obviously like layer lines at this point are like 0.2 microns high on most printers and normally I can see them, but I just can't with the naked eye. Like, maybe if I get the microscope out, I might be able to catch some. But just general, like, layer lines. There's a couple on his helmet, but there's there's hardly anything compared to what I'm used to. And I thought resin printing was, like, insane already. I was like, it's the future. It's honestly the future. It's so, so, so cool. And the the, the quality of prints that are coming off machines these days is amazing. And then Elegoo just go, here's a 12k printer off the shelf. And I'm just I'm just honestly blown away by the quality. It is insanely good. <laughs> now this is just a miniature that I've put together super glued as normal, you know, and it and it looks really nice. I've not glued Boba Fett on so I can paint him separately. And I've got the Sarlacc pit uh, nice and separately so I can paint that as well. And it's really nice, you know, it's it's just a miniature. Now there's a few gaps 
But what you can do, and, and many people might not do this or they might not realise they can do this, is not to go out and buy special glue, it's to use 3D resin, 3D printed resin to, to fill gaps. So that, so by filling gaps, what I mean is, is I actually printed this beautiful Bowser playing the piano <laughs> from the Mario movie by Hex3D. This is honestly a gorgeous, gorgeous design. This is in my head exactly what Bowser looks like. It's no, there's no interpretation here. It is bang on perfect. And this is actually printed in multiple parts. There's actually a join straight down the middle. And what I've done is I've glued it together. Like obviously got the supports off and filed it and sanded it and stuff like that. And then I've glued it together using super glue as normal. And then what I've done is gone along with 3D printing resin just on the end of my knife, uh, obviously while wearing gloves and like used it to put it into the gap. I then use a UV torch to, to like cure the resin back together to do almost like a resin weld uh, to like fill the gap and, and like keep the model nice and secure. And honestly, there's some points that you can't actually tell that it's been that it's been uh, welded because I've basically buffed it with a nail buffer afterwards, especially like along the turtle shell. Oh, honestly, it is a gorgeous model. And obviously, I couldn't print the model without his full piano. <laughs> Which is, this is one of the biggest Resi 3D prints I've ever done. Um, like, I've printed a lot in my time, but never anything this large. Uh, which, obviously, of course, comes with a, a, a portrait of uh, Princess Peach. Um, and the, the only thing, only thing that could make Bowser playing the piano any better is to print a base for it, which also comes as part of the model. Now, I actually had to print this in FDM. I printed this on the, on the Corality Ender S1. And, and I definitely need to tune that printer because the top has come out terribly. However, being able to take the piano <laughs> and Bowser and put it on a gigantic base is very cool with a portrait of Peach. I mean, <laughs> what more do you want? This is what 3D print is designed for. I don't care what anyone else thinks, it's designed for printing dumb stuff like this. So, am I impressed with the Saturn 3? Yes, by all means, I am impressed. Now, the Saturn, again, was my very first resin 3D printer that I bought right in the middle of the pandemic. I think it was three years ago now. And it is honestly the, one of the best machines I've ever bought. And I've worked with a lot, through a lot of 3D printers in the past. And the, the Saturn, as a resin machine, was quite scary. But it was straightforward. You could get straight into it. And it did feel a bit plug and play for the start. And then, and obviously, you can go deeper, start supporting things yourself, start designing things yourself. And that's where it gets a little bit more intense. But... The out of the box system of just like set up, level it, and off you go. It was honestly really good, and it's perfect. It's been perfectly repeated with the Saturn Three, I think. Now, obviously, Elego sent me this the machine for free, so I do have some obviously built-in biases which I can't get around. But I honestly see this as being my machine that I'll be using for pretty much every project from going forward because. It is a lovely machine. It prints everything really nicely. The build plate is really, really nice and it's got very good bed adhesion. And it just seems to handle anything that I'm throwing here now Now that I've tuned the settings. It has a huge build volume. It's got a really nice build height. Obviously, like there's the Ultra, the Saturn 3 Ultra that's been released, which is slightly bigger build plate. It can print slightly faster. It's wireless and stuff like that. But if you're just wanting a very affordable machine and you're either not in resin 3D printing yet, or you're looking for something that's a bit of an upgrade from like a 4K screen, I can highly recommend the Saturn 3 with the 12K screen. That 12K screen compared to like a 4K screen is honestly insane. There's like the difference, it's really hard to like explain the difference, but essentially you thought you could see layer lines and now it's even harder and the layer lines were basically non-existent anyway. And as someone who likes to 3D print stuff to then go off and paint, it's going to make cleanup a lot easier because you're not going to be worried about trying to get rid of some of the voxel lines before you start painting. You're going to be able to just take it spray it and start painting straight away now voxel dance was quite interesting the software that i was using for slicing all of these miniatures because it's all been printed using voxel dance as the final slicer i couldn't quite figure out the support setting so what i was actually ended up doing is taking the miniature into cheeto box supporting it and then put it into voxel dance and then repairing it and then sending it to print which seemed to work really really well to be fair i think voxel dance as a as a user interface is a lot better than cheeto box but I need a little bit more time before I can give you my full opinion on that, but it does seem like quite a good piece of software on initial look, but 
you know, I don't, I'm not qualified enough yet to actually go over it and give you my full opinion. But but yeah, that's been the Saturn 3 review. I want to say a massive thank you to Fickle Dice Games for, for sponsoring today's video. Absolute legendary people to work with. I'm very good friends with them and I'm really excited for their project. So make sure you do get on the launch page by August 15th for it to launch. If you want some trenches, you want some mutations, it's going to be a great time. So thank you to them for sponsoring. Thank you to Elegoo for sending the machine through. And thank you to you for watching. And thank you to all my latest members. Without memberships, I couldn't do what I do. They are literally the lifeblood of the channel and they keep my lights on and let me do slightly different videos like this one. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel and hopefully I'll catch you next time.